Hi, I'm Walt and this is Delta Astrophotography. Recently, the company Move Shoot Move reached out to me and asked if I would try and review their newest Star Tracker, the Nomad. And of course I said, what? But to sweeten the deal, they also sent me this amazing little V-mount. Now, although they did send me all this stuff, they have no influence whatsoever on what I have to say. This is just all gonna be my opinions. And recently I got to take all this stuff out to an astrophotography backpacking trip in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. So, is this little tiny Star Tracker any good? Find out in today's episode of The Mary Tyler Moore Show. The Move Shoot Move Nomad is a tiny tracking device that you attach your camera to and it rotates it with the sky allowing you to take longer exposures of the stars without them trailing. It may look tiny, but it has a whopping payload capacity of 7.7 .7 pounds or 3.5 grams. That's really impressive for this little thing. It's super simple to use with a single power switch on the side that you switch left if you're in the southern hemisphere, right if you're in the northern hemisphere. It's got a single USB port for charging. If you're out camping in the field, you can use one of these battery packs and charge it when it goes dead or pretty much any time you want. On their website, they have many different options for what kind of kit you might want to get, depending on how you want to polar align your star tracker. What they sent me was just this basic kit with a laser pointer for polar alignment and the Nomad itself. The laser pointer can be used to point at the North Star to polar align, but if you're in a place that doesn't allow lasers or if you're just in the Southern Hemisphere, you might want to try a different kit such as the phone holder kit or the polar scope kit. Now I went ahead and bought the phone holder kit because not everybody is able to polar align with a laser. I haven't gotten the polar scope yet. That's gonna be more for deep sky astrophotography and right now I'm gonna be focusing on more wide angle lens photography. I feel like the Nomad really lives up to its name because lately I've been getting real passionate about getting lost out in the wilderness and doing nightscapes out there. And this thing is just so small, you can fit the entire system in your pockets or in a single slot in your camera bag, or in a box of Quaker oatmeal. Just check it out compared to the Ioptron Skyguider Pro Star Trekker. That's, that's a huge difference. I used to think this thing was small and travel friendly, but no, this is much easier to travel with. Now, of course, you're gonna have to attach your tracker to some kind of tripod. The Nomad comes with a built-in Arca Swiss plate, and this will attach to most all ball heads. And there you go. I say most ball heads because some of Manfrotto's newer tripods, they come with these very large ball heads that have their own kind of plate. So this would not attach to that. And I had to find that out the hard way. Now, if you have one of these pan and tilt tripods, you're gonna have to get what's called an Arca Swiss quick release clamp to attach to the top. That would be this right here. You wanna get one with the screw in the middle. Now I'll just take that screw out to use an Allen key to do it. There we go. This quick release clamp came with one of these quarter inch to three eighths inch adapters. It's already in here. If for some reason you're having a hard time finding the right screw size, this is probably the adapter you need and they're really cheap. You can get a bag of them for like five bucks. Just take this piece off the tripod. And it screws right into the bottom of the clamp. And there we go. And put this right back on the tripod. And now you can attach your star tracker. I like to have the back of the Nomad on the same size as the hinge of the tripod. That way when I'm polar aligning, I can use the hinge to look up, the pan feature to go left and right, and this handle just to make sure everything is nice and level. Now I personally prefer mounting my star tracker to a tripod like this instead of mounting it to a ball head just because it's harder to get things level using a ball head because it can just move around in any direction. <laughs> it's hard to get this thing level. Once we get the tracker on the tripod, now we can attach the camera and we do that by adding a ball head. I'm gonna start by taking this piece off right here. Take this piece off and this piece. The very first time I got this, I didn't think this thing was gonna come off. I had to get a flathead screwdriver to get it off, but now it just pops right off. So now I'm gonna take this ring, put it around the bottom of the ball head, and screw this piece on to the bottom of the ball head. There we go. Now I'm gonna give it a little extra tighten with a flathead screwdriver. 
Now the inside of this piece that we took off the Star Trekker, it actually has little teeth. And so does this piece right here on the outside of the tracker. It has teeth as well, and the teeth kind of line up. So it just kind of fits right on nice and neat. And we can tighten this back down. And because of the teeth, the way this red piece attaches to the actual tracker, it takes all the weight off that screw on the bottom side of this ball head, so your camera won't accidentally come unscrewed, fall over sideways, and everybody explodes. Now you attach the Arca Swiss plate that your ball head came with to the bottom of your camera, and you just put it right up here on top of this ball head. And there you go, that's all there is to it. Before we move on, I wanna talk about two Move Shoot Move accessories that I've absolutely fallen in love with, and that would be the Allen Wallace V-mount and Z-mount. Alan Wallace was an absolutely brilliant and very talented nightscape astrophotographer and he helped design these and I'm going to show you why I like to use them. If you've got a tripod like this with a ball head, you can use the V-mount in place of your ball head. I'll just take my Arca Swiss clamp that I already have and attach it to this screw right here on the V-mount. There we go. Unscrew the ball head from the tripod and replace it with the V-mount. Basically, this is gonna act like a wedge to get me more accurate polar alignment. It's got a bubble level at the top. Put my star tracker on, and I can move it up and down to polar align, and it's also got a rotator, so I can rotate it a full 360 degrees. So for me, I could point it right up to the North Celestial Pole up there, tighten it down, and there, I'm polar aligned. If you've got a pan and tilt tripod like this, then this is not necessary at all. But for those of us who like to travel with these lightweight carbon fiber or aluminum tripods that don't have the big handle, this might be a better option for you than the ball head. But where I think these things really shine is how you can attach your ball head and your camera to the tracker. This is the standard configuration with the ball head directly on the tracker. This Star Tracker does not have a clutch. There's no way for me to manually rotate this thing at all. It is stuck there. If I want to rotate it, I literally have to unscrew it, take it off, and then reposition it. But if I attach my ball head to one of the V or Z mounts, and then attach this mount to the Star Tracker, now I've got a completely different kind of system going on here. Both the V and Z systems have a rotator, so it'll rotate your camera like this manually. Let me show you why that might come in handy. Let's say you're out shooting the sky, you're doing a nightscape, your camera's been shooting for a while, it's kind of rotated like this. So everything's kind of in this position. Now it's time to shoot your foreground. Well, you can loosen the rotator, move it back up to the home position, level it out, and you can shoot your foreground. It also comes in handy when you're shooting multiple targets at a night. You can just pick up your setup, move somewhere, bring your setup back to home position, shoot the sky. When you're done shooting the sky, move it back to home position, shoot your foreground, pick it up, go do it all over again. These are in no way necessary, but I absolutely love them. For any Star Tracker to function properly, you need to polar align it to either the North or South Celestial Pole, and the Nomad has several different options to do that. We're gonna start with the one that they sent me. It's a laser. Now, unfortunately, this probably won't work quite as well in the Southern Hemisphere, and these aren't legal everywhere, but it works just fine here, so we're gonna cover this first. Basically, you take the front cap off the laser, which I've already lost, and then you add on this little adapter here that they included with the laser. Just screws right on the front. Now on the back side of the tracker, you have this little red screw here. We just take that out. Don't lose this, you're gonna need it later. And right where we took that screw out, you can screw the laser right in. Now that the laser's screwed in, all you have to do is make sure your tripod's level, turn the laser on, it shoots a very visible beam up into the air, and all you have to do is point your tracker right at the North Star. Make sure this laser is pointed at the North Star, and you're pretty polar aligned, and because the laser is going directly through the tracker and coming out the front, it's pretty accurate. That's really all there is to it, and I know anybody who's experienced with deep sky astrophotography, aiming directly at the North Star is not quite fully polar aligned, but when you're shooting with a 24 millimeter lens doing Milky Way, this is more than enough to get you two, even three minute exposures. One disappointing aspect of using the laser though is once you add your ball head and your camera, the laser beam can sometimes hit the back of your ball head and camera and you can't see the beam anymore. So that's why I really like these V and Z mounts that have the rotator because I can just simply 
rotate the camera out of the way temporarily. Now I can see the beam again. I can repolar align once all this heavy stuff is mounted on top. Once I'm repolar aligned, just move it right back to the home position. Now, not everybody's fortunate enough to be able to polar align with the North Star or live in a place where lasers are legal. So you can use the phone adapter instead. And this is my new favorite way to polar align. The phone holder comes with two pieces, the mount to mount it to the Star Tracker and the phone holder itself. To attach it, you take out that red screw that we talked about earlier. And this adapter has a little hole in here. You can line it up with the hole you took the red screw out of. And it just kind of fits right snug against the Star Tracker and you screw this thing in with that red screw. Like I said, don't lose the red screw. <laughs> I've dropped it five times in the grass at night and I can't believe I've found it every time. I'm just gonna make sure this is good and tight. There we go. To attach the actual phone holder, I had to take the tracker off the tripod. Basically, you've got a little bracket in here. The phone holder just slides right into it. Tighten it down with this white screw right here pop it right back on the tracker. Now I'm gonna place my phone and the phone holder right here, kind of push it flush right up against the back of the tracker, tighten it down. Now to polar align with my phone, I'm gonna use an app for my Android called Polar Aligner Pro. And for iPhone, you wanna use Polar Scope Align Pro. Neither app is free, they're about two or three bucks, but well worth the investment. And they both work almost the same, so you could follow along whichever version you're using. So we're gonna open up Polar Aligner Pro, and it's got a level feature here, a bubble level. Both apps have a bubble level. And I'm gonna use these little circles here on the left and on the bottom. Loosen this little ball head right here on the phone mount, and I'm gonna level my phone. There we go, that looks pretty level. I'm gonna tighten this back down. And now I'm gonna hit Day Align. On the iPhone app, I think it's a little sun icon. Let's hit Day Align. And now we've got a bullseye here. And all we need to do is adjust our star tracker until the crosshairs are in the bullseye. Just like this. Once we get it centered in the bullseye, just tighten it back down. And now I just polar line to two o'clock in the afternoon in my living room. And this really does work. Is it as accurate as the laser? No, but it still does work really well for wide angle lenses. But I don't want you to just take my word for it. Let's look at some test shots with both the phone and the laser and see how they both actually perform. All right, we're going to take a look at a few unprocessed RAW files. The first ones we're going to look at, I polar aligned using the phone mount. This is going to be a 24 millimeter lens shot at 120 seconds, ISO 800. At first glance, that looks pretty good. If we zoom way in pixel level. The stars are ever so slightly starting to trail, just barely. It's not even noticeable when you're zoomed out but all the way in, I can almost see a little bit of stretching on that star. Probably could have been better with a 90 second exposure instead of 120 seconds. Still, if I didn't zoom into pixel level, this is a very usable image. Now we're gonna look at a 50 millimeter polar line with the phone at 120 seconds or two minutes. Zoom in and there's very visible star trailing here. I would not wanna use this image at all. The star trailing was very apparent on the back of my camera that night, so instead I tried a 60 second exposure. Changed my ISO to 3200, and this is what I got. Perfectly round stars. So the 50 millimeter couldn't quite handle a two minute exposure polar line with the phone, but did just fine with 60 seconds. Now we're gonna take a look at some photos polar aligned with the laser, starting with 24 millimeters at 120 seconds. Zoom in the center of the screen here. We've got nice and round stars. And as a little surprise, there's Andromeda coming up in the bottom. <laughs> now let's look at a 50 millimeter polar line with the laser at 120 seconds. And the stars are nice and round, perfectly round. So it looks like the laser definitely did the better job polar aligning. Now, just for fun, I went ahead and stacked a few of the photos that I took with the phone mount and the 24 millimeter, processed them in Pixinsight, and here's the final result. The day I got the Nomad in the mail, I left for an astrophotography trip to Colorado. 
I went to the Great Sand Dunes, the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, and the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. I was so excited to get on the road that I actually left the laser at home, and this was before I had the phone mount. So of course I panicked when I realized that, but eventually I realized I could put the phone right on top of the Nomad and use the app Polar Aligner Pro to polar align. Well, this wasn't the best and it took a while to get used to it, but after a few days I was nailing it every time. So it just goes to show how good this thing really is for nightscape photography. I'll show you how those photos turned out in just a minute, and there'll also be a link to that trip at the end of this video. Well guys, I'm just so impressed with this tiny little thing. It's gonna make a lot of my future backpacking nightscape adventures so much easier. Not only is it so light and portable, it's very affordable. Just the unit by itself is about $210. You can get it with the laser pointer for about $230 or $40 and with the phone adapter for about $260. That's an entire star tracking package for under 300 bucks. You can't beat that. Now I said at the beginning of the video, Move Shoot Move has not paid me a dime to talk about this tracker, but I did sign up to become an affiliate. And so now there's a link in the description below where you can go and get the tracker or some accessories and you can use my discount code Delta to get a 5% discount. So definitely check that out. If you're interested in getting one, it would help this channel out a lot. And speaking of helping the channel, if you like the video or learned anything, let me know in the comments below. Give me a like, subscribe for more stuff. I'm definitely gonna be going on some more adventures with this thing. And that about wraps things up. So I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, stay spacey, clear skies, watch out for snakes, and we'll see you in the next one.